So we finally meet. <laughs> Hi, this is Asa from Game One Daily, and this is a relatively short and sweet tech analysis. So, Capcom have released a demo of Resident Evil 8 Village, or Resident Evil 8age, as it's going to be known from here on out, I hope. Um, they're calling it a visual demo, which is basically an invitation for us to take a close look at the graphics and performance. It'd be rude not to. Uh, 8age is a multi platform game, but the demo is exclusive to the PlayStation 5. So it blocks a lot of people from checking it out. Um, we've already uploaded a quite simple, um, a raw playthrough of the full demo at really high quality, which isn't the same as playing it, but it's the next best thing. So if you've not got a PlayStation 5 yourself and you want to check that out, it's on the channel. So this demo being on just one platform, um, it gives us an opportunity to look into it without really falling into the mindset of finding a best version, which is kind of refreshing, but it also means that we've got less points of reference to kind of help understand how the visuals come together. So. Let's start really broad. Um, the presentation aims for a 4K resolution at 60 frames per second and it even includes some ray traced reflections. Uh, we'll touch on the details more through the video, but the takeaway there is that Capcom are being quite ambitious with their performance targets. Um, the environment and the character art in the demo are no less ambitious in terms of vision at least. Um, it's detailed and pretty evocative throughout. Okay, so let's take a look at how well the game actually hits those performance targets. As far as I can tell, it renders at 4K for better or worse, so there doesn't appear to be any kind of dynamic scaling in place. And that means that if the console can't keep up with what it's being asked to do, it is the frame rate that takes the hit. Um, and you can see from the graphs that I've overlaid uh, up to now, the frame rates hold really well at 60 in all of the closed in areas, but there are some noticeable dips when the levels open up a bit. Uh, the final game takes place in a village, so I do expect a lot more open spaces and it's definitely something that uh, Capcom are going to need to address. This is probably a good time to mention ray tracing as well, as uh, this large room is where I noticed it all across the floor. Um, the ray trace reflections are really subtle, so subtle that um, honestly I question their value in being there, particularly if their inclusion is causing this performance hit. Uh, and when I say they're subtle, the demo has a literal mirror that doesn't shout about it. So. I can't say for sure what the performance impact of ray tracing is, and performance does suffer when looking out a window, which is the only other kind of open area that you can see in this demo. But typically, you do um, you associate ray tracing with a heavy performance cost, and I'm not personally convinced that these reflections are the best use of that budget. And that leads nicely onto the area that I think needs the most improvement, and that is shadows. So Atis uses a mix of baked shadows, real-time shadows, and one particularly ugly visual trick that I'll get to in just a minute. So baked shadows are kind of static shadows that are placed around the environment by an artist. And the upshot is that you get nice clean shadows that look good so long as you don't have things like moving light sources or a particularly dynamic scene. And that applies to most of this demo. That's fine, that's great. <laughs> but sometimes there's a real need for a dynamic shadow. For example, a scene with an atmospherically placed fire, or any scene where the player character is wearing a torch. Now, I mentioned earlier that there was one particularly nasty trick in terms of shadowing, and this player torch is where it comes in. So rather than um, have the torch cast dynamic shadows into the environment, which would really suit this game so well, being moody and atmospheric as it is, uh, rather than have that happen, the torch uses them. Um, this nasty kind of sticky fake shadow effect. It seems to kind of detect the geometry and place a fake shadow nearby, which works really well on the, the walls with these bricks protruding. Um, it looks like it's casting a shadow, but in other scenes it just looks terrible. Like this this gate that's on the screen now, if you look carefully at the shadows, they, they don't make any sense. They're attached, they're part of the gate itself, and they open with it rather than dynamically casting on the wall behind it. <laughs> the uh, the bad news is once you've noticed this little trick you can't stop noticing it so <laughs> please accept my apologies for pointing it out all right let's let's move on from the torch the the last thing that i really briefly want to highlight is the texture work in the game 
broadly speaking, it's good. The surfaces and the materials have a depth to them, and generally, I would say art is probably the strongest element of the demo. The, the textures don't hold up perfectly if you get kind of intimately close, and it would be good to see, um, to see Capcom a little more aware of that, particularly for the moments that the game forces you in close, like um, crawling through tight spaces and things like that. Um, but generally, that's a minor thing, so the textures are good. Okay, I should wrap this up now, or the analysis is going to end up longer than the demo. Uh, my personal opinion is that Capcom maybe haven't put their best foot forwards with this showcase, but there's real promise in the art and plenty of time, hopefully, plenty of time for them to address the issues that, that I've got with it. Uh, let us know what you think. If you've enjoyed the video, then please give it a like. And yeah, I'm Asa, this is Game On Daily, and thank you so much for watching.